That reach will be on display this week. Will supply constraints hit profits? Will clouds see big growth? And what about the ad business? With us now to break it down is uh, editor-in-chief of Fast Company, Stephanie Mehta, uh, also my former editor from my magazine days. Stephanie, always great to talk to you. So here's, here's part of what I'm thinking as I look at Fast Company's coverage. Amazon is sort of this microcosm, isn't it, of uh, the, the U.S. and global economy in that it's ramping up investment uh, in these technologies that are going to make blue-collar and frontline work ne uh, less necessary. But at the same time, it's hiring more people than anybody. Yeah, a Amazon is, as you said, you know, it, it is this microcosm of the U.S. economy. We are seeing it need human capital in a really big way. And particularly, as you mentioned, it goes into its busy holiday season. There are just certain things that it's going to need bodies to do. And so you're seeing the company ramp up hiring. They are increasing wages. And that puts pressure on every other company that pays minimum wage or pays wages um, to their employees. At the same time, they are investing. They're investing in technology. They're investing in automation. And it's been really interesting. One of the things that we were really excited to write about and unpack is they're investing in a lot of the logistics technology that, you know, they now rely on others to provide. And so, you know, in some ways, this makes Amazon the classic frenemy, right? At the same time that they are an important customer of UPS, they're also potentially a competitor of UPS's. And you see this play out in every aspect of the economy. You know, with AWS, Amazon, on the one hand, competes with a lot of consumer packaged goods companies because it's created these white label brands that compete with, you know, the household names that you see in your regular retailers. But by the way, AWS is more than happy to provide all kinds of back end services to consumer packaged goods companies. It's a big part of their business. So, you know, Amazon just occupies this very interesting role in the American economy. And that's what we wanted to unpack. Yeah. Um, it, now. I also think I want your take on the globalization impact here. Globalization has been under attack in general, uh, and you know supply chain issues have raised lots of questions about what that's going to look like going forward. But it seems like within certain companies, Amazon being one, I'd point out Apple also, they're, they're very global, right? They have global supply chains. They cite that as a strength, and they continue to operate that way. So is there something here about the companies that are able to uh, vertically integrate and still get the benefits of globalization and some others that are more fragmented and might not? Yeah, there, there's a lot of different issues at work here. I mean, what's so interesting about Amazon, not only and, and Apple, not only are they globally, they don't, they rely on a global supply chain, but they also have global customers. And so, you know, in a lot of cases, they are producing or they are relying on product that exists really close to the customers that they are serving. So, I think it's really important to remember that these companies don't operate just in the United States, although we identify them most closely with the United States. You know. Part of Amazon's secret sauce is the incredible amount of digitization and analytics that it has. And so, you know, if any company is going to be able to manage its supply chains to predict where supply chain bottlenecks are going to be, it's likely to be companies like Amazon and Apple. They're just so much far ahead, further ahead of, you know, other retailers and others in the consumer packaged goods spaces. Stephanie, it's so good to see you. And this is such a dr dramatic, comprehensive look at every business that Amazon is in. And I'm curious if, in light of that, you have any new insights into what you think the real regulatory risk is for Amazon right now. Where do you think some of these antitrust concerns could really potentially hamper Amazon's business? Hey, Julia, it, it's a really good question. You know, we we wrote in the package about Lena Khan, and you know, Lena Khan has, in her writings, indicated that you. Know, Looking at Amazon requires not a look at what this means for the competitive landscape around pricing for consumers, but around the competitive landscape vis-a-vis -vis other competitors and other players in the space. I, I think, you know, I, we'd be remiss if we didn't say that regulators are probably taking a really close look at AWS. There are not that many other companies in that space. It's not a, a place where there are a thousand flowers blooming. So, if you look at where they have a lot of power and control, it is certainly in the cloud business. Um, and, and I think regulators are also going to be taking a close look at, you know, labor practices, maybe not antitrust uh, regulators, but certainly we're, we've seen a lot of stories coming out over the last couple of years about the way 
um, work conditions are at Amazon. You know, John referred to, to the, the need for increased labor at the same time that they're also looking at automation. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if we see regulators take a close look at how Amazon uh, behaves vis-a-vis -vis its, its workforce.